Hi, uh, my name is Xiaodong Wang. I work at Harvard Hughes Medical Institute at UT Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, Texas. And today we are going to talk about apoptosis, uh, which is a form of programmed cell death, that a death that executed by an intrinsic biochemical program inside our cells. Apoptosis is actually play a very important role for the well-being of a whole uh, organism, including us. And in here, I am list a couple, several examples of uh, the function of apoptosis. <coughs> During normal development, uh, apoptosis play a very critical role in shaping up uh, the shape of our uh, organs and bodies. I am going to give you a couple more, a more visual uh, example in the next few slides. And also for the immune system function, uh, after our body encounter a foreign antigen, either it's from a bacteria or virus, uh, we'll generate specific T cells, lots of T cells and B cells to counter that antigen. But once that antigen is eliminated, um, these cells need to, uh, to be eliminated from the body as well, and they uh, undergo apoptosis. Also, uh, tissue homeostasis, and, and we know once we uh, reach adult size, our, the size of the organs uh, will stay the same. But in some of our organs, like skin and liver, uh, the cells continue to divide, and these newly generated cells has to be balanced by the apoptosis of some of the old ones. And also, uh, apoptosis play a critical role in eliminating the damaged cells in our body. Uh, for example, the sunburn cells. Um, when we uh, walk outdoors uh, under the Texas sun for five minutes, for example, in the summertime, we will get sunburns. That's because the cells in our skin uh, will respond to the damage caused by the UV light. Uh, they will activate their apoptotic program and, and die. And that's how we get sunburns. Also, the, uh, the chemical and the radiation and the virus damage cells uh, needs to be eliminated by apoptosis. And if they cannot be el eliminated by apoptosis properly, and these damages may cause human disease. Since apoptosis are very important for many of these uh, physiological functions of a whole organism, um, if something wrong with, with apoptosis, and there are many forms of human disease can arise. And for example, uh, in case of cancer or autoimmune disease, the apoptotic program cannot be executed properly. And that will result too many cells in these cases, and that contribute to the uh, disease of cancer and autoimmune disease. On the other side, the flip side of the coin, um, such as radiation damage or uh, uh, ischemic reperfusion uh, during stroke or heart attack, and the cells undergo apoptosis um, improperly and, and prematurely, and with that will cause permanent damage. So uh, as you can see, the, the, the proper balance of apoptosis uh, is very, very important for the well-being of a whole organism. And if there is something wrong with the program, uh, there are many diseases can arise. So one purpose of studying apoptosis and trying to understand the, the molecular details of the uh, of apoptotic program uh, is to understand what's wrong in, in these disease states and, and hopefully to come out with strategies and to correct these defects and, and battle this disease. And in the end of my talk, I'm going to give you two specific examples and how we might be able to do that. So um, here is just a, a two visual demonstration that if uh, apoptosis cannot happen properly during development, what will happen? And this mouse has a, a a gene that is required for apoptosis uh, knockout from their genome. As a result, uh, this mouse has too much brain tissues that they grow out of the skull. And, and you may already know that 
more than half of neurons ever generated uh, has to die by apoptosis even before we are born. And if that process cannot happen properly, and you, uh, you are not going to get a normal animal. Uh, another well-known example is the recession of the web, uh, interdigital web, and the cells made up of this web have to undergo apoptosis at a particular time during development to give us this nice fingers and toes. So, uh, <clears throat> we know apoptosis is important and we really want to study the, the molecular details about apoptosis, how it all start. Um, apoptosis, uh, the initial description of, of apoptosis is mostly based on its morphological uh, changes that associated with this form of cell death. And these morphological changes will include the, the cell shrinkage, the membrane bleeding, meaning that in normal cells, the membrane is relatively smooth and rigid, and during apoptosis, the membrane starts waving, and we call the membrane bleeding. And some of the organelles in a cell, such as nuclear membrane, will break down during apoptosis. The chromatin will condense, and also, uh, finally, you will form the small membrane-bound vesicles that we call apoptosis, apoptotic body, that literally slip off the cell, and which will be uh, rapidly phagocytosed by the macrophages and neighboring cells. So, uh, to give a, a, a visual example what is apoptosis really means, I usually say that apoptosis is basically you start a cell uh, with a cell that looks like a melon, and after apoptosis, you end up like uh, uh, hundreds of uh, small grapes. Um, the, this form of cell death, the key feature uh, for this form of cell death is the cellular content uh, are not leak out. And, and although the cell dies, the cellular content remains inside the cell and the membrane-bound vesicle, which will frequently uh, rapidly phagocytose by other cells, so the cellular content never spill out to the bloodstream that it will not cause uh, inflammation response. <clears throat> so these characteristic morphological changes are caused by specific biochemical uh, reactions, and here are several uh, examples of bio specific biochemical changes that associated with apoptosis. For example, the, uh, uh, the chromatin condensation. So if you stain uh, the DNA of apoptotic cells, you can see the DNA now staying like a half a moon. That's because, the, uh, first of all, the nuclear membrane breaks down. You don't have the uh, uh, nice uh, round shape of, of, of nuclear uh, stain. And also the chromatin condensed uh, into this very bright stain that gives you this typical uh, half moon shape. Uh, this is uh, um, the one of the easiest and quick way to measure apoptosis um, in tissue culture is just to simply stain uh, DNA with a, with a Hertz dye or DAPI. Uh, another uh, uh, characteristic uh, biochemical changes for apoptosis is the flipping of the PS, uh, phosphatidyl. Uh, serine, which is a uh, phospholipids on a cell uh, membrane. Uh, you know the cell membrane are, uh, uh, has two uh, leaflets, and in the living cells, most of the PS is in the inner leaflets. But during apoptosis, the PS will flip out and appears on the outside of the cell, and that can be specifically detected because PS has a, uh, this protein, uh, annexin 5, has a specificity for the PS, and when you uh, conjugate a, 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 a dye, a fluorescence dye with uh, adenine uh, uh, nexin 5, and you, you add this dye to, uh, to a cell, and the apoptotic cells now, uh, because their PS is flipped outside, can be stained by annexin 5. And here is a, 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 a Actually, the first biochemical marker uh, described for apoptosis is DNA fragmentation. Um, 
meaning that if you take DNA out of uh, apoptotic cells and you analyze this DNA on an agar cell, and you will see the DNA appears as a letter. And with they fragmented into these uh, fragments, with each fragment with this uh, interval of about 140 nucleotide, which is the size of the DNA wrap, wrap up around the nucleosome uh, octamer. And <coughs> caspase activation, um, another biochemical markers of apoptosis. These caspases are a group of intracellular protease, and they, their active site is, is, is cysteine, um, and they cleave their substrate after aspartic acid, that's how they get its name, uh, cysteine aspirase or caspase. And these proteases are in uh, living cells. They are made uh, as a zymogen. They are not active. But when the cell is undergoing apoptosis, uh, they will become activated. And the activation is uh, um, represented by the, uh, the cleavage of its a precursor form or zymogen form into the active side, active form, which is uh, um, uh, usually about uh, 20 and 10 uh, keratotons. And we'll talk a lot more about caspase activation in the later part of my talk. And the caspase activity are <coughs> known to be responsible for the most the, the biochemical and the morphological changes that are associated with the apoptosis. So the true molecular nature uh, of apoptosis is first demonstrated in a study of warm C. elegant uh, by uh, Jiang Sauston and Bob Horowitz. Um, the one unique feature about uh, C. elegant is during development, uh, their dev all its lineage, cell lineage can be traced, and meaning that the the cells, uh, the number of the cells, uh, and the, the position of the cells, and the fate of the cells is constant during development. So in this way, uh, all the cell fate uh, can be traced uh, during the entire development. Of course, this organism is relatively simple. The, uh, in adult, it's only, about, it's only have uh, uh, about 1,000 cells. And during this lineage analysis, and these two scientists discovered that um, some of the cells that they are generated, um, but they also disappear. Uh, they never made it to the, the final adult stage. And these cells uh, die, and they die at a particular developmental time, time and space in, in the body. So because of this property, these scientists are able to uh, uh, mutagenize the worm and found a mutant that unable to properly execute uh, this form of cell death. And the cells that normally will die uh, during development now lived. And based on this genetic analysis, these scientists are able to uh, uh, clone the genes and map a genetic pathway for apoptosis which is showed in the next slides. And this uh, is the core uh, pathways of apoptosis in C. elegans. These are the, the, the important genes that play a critical role. Um, you know, I like to point out that uh, in this pathway, uh, you have in the top of the pathway, you have AGO3, AGO1, I'm sorry. Uh, it will negatively regulate a protein called SYN9 and the CID9 will negatively regulate a protein called CID4, which will positively uh, regulate a protein called CID3. And these CID3 and CID4 are required for the uh, apoptosis during the development in C. elegans. If you have a loss of function of these two genes, and the C. elegans will have uh, more cells uh, in, their, in the adult. I think another uh, uh, important uh, uh, feature for this uh, apoptotic pathway in C. elegans is all these genes have uh, uh, homologs uh, in uh, all the way to mammalians, uh, mammals uh, 
including uh, human. Um, and the, for example, the, the set three um, is a gene encode a CIG and a caspase. I already mentioned the caspase are critical enzymes that execute in apoptosis. And also uh, APAF1 protein is homologous to set four and the BCL2 family protein homologous to set nine and the BH3 only protein homologous to ACO1. And we are going to discuss um, in details how these protein functions. Another important uh, uh, experimental breakthrough uh, for our understanding that the molecular details of apoptosis is actually come out from a, a, a pediatric oncologist uh, study uh, in this uh, uh, childhood leukemia, like fo uh, follicular lymphoma. Um, in, um, in these cases, uh, it's a B cell uh, lymphoma, and um, Janet uh, Rowley uh, in, uh, in the 1970s uh, realized that there are chromosomal translocation in, in this uh, follicular lymphoma. Uh, the translocation is happened between chromosome 18 and 14, and as a result, uh, this protein, uh, B, this uh, gene, BCL2, now translocated and in chromosome 14, and now is under the control of IgG promoter. As you know, these B cells are specialized cells that are making antibodies. The IgG promoter is very strong in these cells. But now, instead of making IgG heavy chain, they are, this IgG promoter now control the the BCL2 genes. As a result, this B cells will make a lot more BCL2 than normal. And as a result, that these B cells become a, a follicular lymphoma. The, the key function for the BCL2 family proteins actually uh, derived from uh, this particular experiment done by uh, David Vo, Susan Corey, and uh, Jerry Adams in, early, uh, in, in, the, in the late 80s. And in that experiment, uh, they cultured normal B cells as well as B cells from follicular, lymph uh, follicular lymphoma cells. And in order to culture the B cell in vitro, you have to add a, spec a specific growth, ho uh, growth hormones, IL-3, interleukin-3. And if you take this IL-3 out of the tissue culture medium, the normal B cells will die, will undergo apoptosis. But the, uh, the B cells from follicular lymphoma that overexpress BCL2 uh, will not die, will resistant to, to death when you take out the IL-3 out of the tissue culture medium. So that's meaning, that means that the BCL2, uh, which is oncogen, that the overexpression will cause a uh, tumor, in this case follicular lymphoma, and, but its function is, is to uh, uh, make the cells resistant to apoptosis. And you know, previous to this observation, and the general, general ideas for the function of oncogene that is they promote cell growth and the proliferation. But this experiment demonstrates that oncogene could also uh, anti-cell death. Uh, the BCL2 family has many members. And now that we know that uh, in addition to the BCL2, which is the founding member of this family, there are quite a few uh, 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 proteins in the human genome that show homology with BCL2. And based on this homology alignment, and we can uh, uh, divide the BCL2 protein into four domains, uh, BH1 to 4, the BH domain meaning the BCL2 homologous domain, um, and there are also we can uh, three uh, subgroups in this family, and we on top of the family are these proteins that are very homologous to BCL2, such as BCLXL or MCL1 and a few others, and these proteins showed distinct homologous domains BH1 to 4 compared to BCL2. At the C-terminal of the protein, um, they also have this transmembrane domain that will anchor this protein 
to uh, mitochondria as well as well as other organelles. So these BCL2 family proteins like BCLXL and MCL1 and has a similar function as BCL2 that they anti apoptosis they counter or they can protect cells from apoptosis if overexpressed in, 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 in cells. And here is a, a couple proteins that we uh, like BAX and BAC that we call uh, that we call uh, pro apoptotic uh, BCL2 family proteins. And these proteins show homologies with BCL2 at BH123 uh, uh, domain, but they don't have a BH4 domain. And these proteins uh, contrast to the BCL2 family pro uh, BCL2 that if they, their function is to pro-apoptosis. And the detailed function I'm also going to talk a little bit more. And there are also another a group of uh, BCL2 homologous protein that we call the BH3 only. And I mentioned that the, the in C. elegant, the AGO1 protein is one of the BH3 only protein. The, the, the reason we call them BH3 only because in the primary sequence of this protein, uh, the BH3 domain is the only recognized domain that is homologous to BCL2. So uh, the key uh, enzyme uh, that drive apoptosis uh, is this enzyme we now call caspase. Um, these proteins, uh, I, I mentioned before, that they are cysteine protease. They are the act active site is cysteine. And they made in the cell, in the living cells, as zymogen. They are made, but they are not active. So during apoptosis, uh, this zymogen needs to be activated. The, the activation process is also through proteolysis. It's usually by the cut, uh, about a two third part of the protein. And this cut will activate the, pro the zymogen, which will also cut off their, uh, their pro-domain at their first substrate. So uh, the active enzyme is a, is a heterotetromer. It has four subunits in the enzyme, has two symmetric active sites, as demonstrated by this red ball. Um, they all generated from the, the precursor uh, dimeric protein. And since the, the caspase, uh, uh, the enzyme that drive apoptosis, and also execute uh, apoptosis, give us the known uh, uh, morphological and biochemical markers of apoptosis. So the activation of the, the, the caspase uh, must play a very important role uh, in, in this whole apoptotic process. And we are going to spend uh, uh, the, the next uh, uh, few minutes talk about the, uh, the activation process of a caspase and how much we know about it. So why the, uh, the caspase is important? And here I'm going to give you one example that how the caspase activity will generate the, the, the typical biochemical changes that we associate with apoptosis. And in this case, uh, we have caspase 3 and 7. Um, these are two of the major caspases uh, in a dying cell. And we call these uh, executioner caspase because this function is executing apoptosis. And inside the nucleus of our cells, we have a, het uh, a heterodimeric protein that we call uh, DFF for DNA fragmentation factor. And the same protein also get called ICAD and CAD. For CAD is for the caspase activated DNAs, uh, also CPEN, and they are independently discovered by three groups. That's how they get three different names. And in this uh, ICAD or DFF45, which is 45 kilodaltons, has two cleavage sites for caspase uh, 3 and 7. So in the apoptotic cell, the caspase 3 and 7 will cleave this DFF45 and the cleavage will dissociate the fragments from another subunit, which is uh, 40 kilodalton in size, what's called DFF40 or CAD. And this subunit, once the, the, uh, 
the inhibitory subunits get cleaved off, will uh, form an active enzyme, uh, in this case, a DNA -nase. And this DNA -nase will uh, uh, come to the, uh, the, chrom uh, the chromatin uh, nucle uh, nucleosome linker region and cleave uh, the DNA at this region. And that's why the, uh, when you take the DNA out of apoptotic cells, and you will see this characteristic DNA letter, and each letter with the interval of a DNA wrap up a, a nucleosome. And this cleavage will also cause the chromatin to, to collapse and condense, and that gives you this typical uh, uh, half moon staining when you stain the, the, the nuclei of apoptotic cells. So, as you can see, once the caspase is activated, they will trigger this chain of reaction and leading to the fragmentation of the DNA into pieces. So the activation of this caspase is quite important for, um, for apoptosis.